Hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my shop. Today, I want to take a little time to give you guys a shop tour. I always find it really interesting to see the spaces that people are working out of. Uh, sometimes you pick up some really cool ideas on ways to organize or um, use your tools or, you know, whatever. So, I um, thought I'd give you guys just a little walk around the shop here. My, um, well, I guess what I would call my shop occupies about a half of the third stall of our thir three car garage. So we have a three car garage. Uh, we live in Wisconsin. So I share that space with all the kids stuff, uh, two cars, uh, my lawnmower, snowblower, um, you know, all the typical things that come along with suburban home ownership. And I have somehow managed to pack everything in the garage here so that I can still get both our cars in and all that other stuff and have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 100 square feet for my shop. Um, now that's a little bit misleading because when I say I have about 100 square feet, that means the actual footprint of the shop when everything's kind of tucked away is about 100 square feet. There are some tools that in order to use them, I kind of have to pull them out. Um, and like my table saw, for instance, if I want to cut some like a big panel or a really long board, I probably have to back my van out and then um, kind of like move the move the table saw a little bit so that I have room to, to rip a long board or something like that. But, uh, you know, I kind of have everything set up to utilize walkways and spaces like that. And then, I mean, you know, if I really need to, I can back both cars out and I can spread everything over and I can take up the whole garage if I want to. I just, I don't do that very often because I'm not generally working on anything that big. And my garage is also heated, which I'm really spoiled by. And so in the winter, it's nice to have the cars inside so you don't have to scrape and all that and you have a warm car to jump into. So I know I'm spoiled, but it's really nice. Without the heat out here, I don't, it would be, it would be very cold in the winter. Um, it would definitely be below freezing. And I know there's guys that are working with those situations. So man, good for you. But I'm lucky that I can have a, have a heater in here. And um, I, you know, it's not boiling warm. Obviously I'm wearing a hat and a coat and stuff or a vest, whatever, but it keeps it warm enough that I'm pretty comfortable in here most of the time. And so there's, there's kind of a couple of main stations that I'll kind of show you guys through and uh, we'll go from there. The, the first real thing to notice is the, the main back wall of my shop is covered in French cleats. All the tools that I like to use often are mounted on this wall somewhere. Um, usually within hands grasp of the workbench itself, or like my lathe is up along the wall over here to the side. I'll show you that in a second. You can get all the tools that I need uh, for the lathe from there. I do have a big toolbox that stores my less frequently used tools, and I have some shelving and things like that for stuff that I don't use all that often. And I actually have a really high ceiling in my garage. It's like, I don't know, nine, 10 feet up there. So I have French cleats that go all the way up almost so that I can have storage all the way up there. And if I really have something obscure that I maybe use, I don't know, once a year or something like that, then I gotta get the ladder out to get to it. But at least it has a place and it's up out of the way and I'm using as much of my space as I possibly can. For my French cleat walls, I just screwed them right to the wall. I know some guys like to put something up behind the French cleats to mount to, but my garage is drywalled and I don't know. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon, and I figure the next guy gets French cleat walls, or he's just upset that there's a whole bunch of boards screwed to his wall, uh, but he'll get over it because it's a pretty nice garage, and I like it. So I'll back the camera up here a bit, and I'll show you guys the workbench and the kind of the main station where I spend most of my time, and we'll go from there. All right, so we backed the camera up a little bit, and we're tilting down a little. Here's my main workbench here. This is where I spend most of my time. That's a pretty common workbench it's the harbor freight workbench it's not fancy it's too light i've made a few changes to it to make it a little bit better for my purposes and um as you can see down here i've mounted a, a front vise to there i had to pull the the top drawer out of the bench so that i could get that vise on there um it works it, it's not ideal someday i definitely need to upgrade make my own bench i just i haven't gotten there i mean this this even as crummy as it is, is good enough. And I don't really worry about it. Obviously I've dumped stain on it. I've got writing and goop and whatever. I don't know, it's a workbench and it works. It, with all the stuff that's on it, it's heavy enough that it doesn't really go anywhere. And I put a little cross bracing in the back so that it doesn't wobble as much. Cause when it was new, it definitely, you know, if you got the plain in wood on there, it would move a bunch. So um, it's an okay bench um, for the price of what it was using one of those crazy coupons that they offer. 
I couldn't have done much better for the cost if I had to buy all my own lumber and put it all together. Um, this works. So anyway, that's my bench. I have all kinds of tool storage underneath the things that I use frequently. Off to the side under there is where I put my uh, shop vac. You can see I have an air compressor up there, a little super quiet one. Over here to the left of the bench is my wood lathe, and I have a little, I made a little table to sit on top of the lathe there that's a little bit of overflow for my workbench if I'm not turning something. That's on there, and I can set other, I don't know, whatever on top of there, so I have a little overflow space. Uh, obviously, if I'm turning, that little table just comes right off. So we moved over a little bit. There's a Harbor Freight lathe. It's not anything super fancy, but it's big enough and good enough for what I do. Someday I'll probably upgrade, but, I, you know, it, it, there's only a few times that I've been frustrated by it and it's still working, so I'm just gonna keep going with it until it doesn't hold up anymore. To the left of my lathe, I have a, what do you call that, a radial drill press, and I picked that up used from a guy down the road, actually, really good price, and um, it's a nice drill press. It has really good clearance and spindle travel for the footprint of it, and I guess it's technically a benchtop drill press because it's, you know, it's mounted on that, that stand there, but um, if you want, you can loosen everything up and it pulls out and you can set something down on the floor. It just, it has a lot of versatility to it that's been quite handy. Um, to the left of that is some shelving and there's my, I have some bench grinders on there and things that I don't use constantly, but I can pull them out and set them on the work, on the workbench or whatever I need when I need a grinder. Up above the lathe, you can see my lathe tools. Um, I have them mounted in a little rack there on the French cleats and I like my lathe tools mounted tip down. Anything sharp and pointy, I try to keep tip down in my shop in case something weird happens. You know, you slip, you fall, you catch your hand. At least you're less likely to hurt yourself. I've seen a lot of people that mount their lathe tools with their tips up um, because it's easy to do. You know, you can just like drill a hole and have a little cup and set your lathe tool down in there. Uh, but that makes me nervous. So anyway, all mine are mounted tip down. You have some lathe accessories, a couple of hand saws that I use frequently. Uh, that's my chuck for my lathe. And if you go even higher up, I have all kinds of storage up higher, my little library, some more saws. Uh, that's my steady rest right there for my lathe that I made. And right next to the bench here is my marking and measuring stuff and my glue, all that fun stuff up there. And some really commonly used hand tools right here and some Nipic pliers, and then here's all my marking, you know, pencils and markers and things like that. Frequently used hammers, and then all my little pocket knives that I use all the time are in there, and my drill and driver there mounted next to the window. I probably should develop a better method for that, but it works. So here we are to the right of the workbench. We just have some storage, and you know, some people when they do shop tours, they uh, clean up really nicely, and I don't know, I don't think that's all that realistic. This is what my shop looks like most of the time. There's stuff out, there's things everywhere, there's some sawdust on the floor and leaves that blew in when the garage door was open. And, uh, you know, this is just what my shop looks like. I thought that would be more realistic than making it all pristine and, I don't know, giving you a false sense of my cleanliness. So, um, anyway, over here to the right of the workbench, um, down below, there's a tool cabinet over here that's got some of my sharpening supplies and some other things like that. Uh, air compressor, air compressor tools, shop vac, and up above are my Buck Brothers chisels, which are just cheap chisels. Someday I should probably upgrade. Frequently used planes, the three that I use the most often. Um, some cabinet scrapers on that little rack right there. And here we have clamps. Lots of clamps, gotta have clamps. Some stains and finishes up above, a couple of routers and some more storage up above the window there. Um, some other, you know, draw knives and spoke shaves and a Shinto rasp file, uh, saw rasp they call it, I believe. That thing's awesome. Um, small parts storage and just things like that. If come this way a little bit to the right of that is there's my Tormek. I am very fortunate to have that super expensive Tormek sharpener. Um, if you've never used one of those, they're really nice, but man, they're pricey. Um, and I have a good set of jigs. Those are all in the tool cabinet as well. And my charging station, which is uh, just a mess of wires that are mounted on a board, and I can charge most of my hand-powered, uh, battery-powered tools are the rigid tools. So I have the rigid chargers. Uh, the Black & Decker stuff is for my lawn tools. I have a weed whacker and blower, so that's really not for the shop. And then my the Wen guy there is I have a battery-powered chainsaw that I really like if you ever need one. It's very cheap, and it, it works. Uh, some rasps up above, and up above that, just some more storage. 
and a light mounted there. And then there's my stereo. You gotta have a stereo in your shop and speakers and my sign that my neighbor got me. I thought that was really cool. And if we go a little farther over, here's my service door that goes out the back of my garage and a couple of axes mounted on a board because sometimes when you're going out the door, you need an ax and, uh, or a hatchet if you prefer. To the right of the door, there's kind of a little nook back here in the garage. There's a lot of small wood storage, my router tables up there, and a big shelf mounted on the wall, my fan. I, you know, it's just a jumble of mess. Everything gets kind of tucked back there because it's out of the way. Um, there's some bigger planes down on the bottom down there. I have a number seven and the an eight and some big ones that I don't use as frequently, big jointers. Um, screws and nuts and bolts and other hand tools that don't get used constantly, but they're easy to get to if I need them. And there's some more clamp storage kind of mounted on the side of that shelf. So we'll kind of back up and give you a better view of this here. So there's my jointer. Picked that guy up used from a fella down south of me a bit. And I don't use a jointer super frequently, but it's nice to have when I do. And it's set up kind of in a walkway that if I really need to do anything a decent size, I just kind of pull it and angle it out and I can get to it. Uh, it's on casters. Pretty much every major power tool in my shop is on casters. So everything's pretty easy to move around. Um, if I need to do something kind of funky, I have space for that if need be. Then I have a big tool chest over there that has mostly uh, non-woodworking non tools. Some of my big battery-powered tools are down in the bottom chest of there, but for the most part, it's like mechanics stuff and home improvement junk and electrical things and, I don't know, the stuff that doesn't get used in the shop as much. Then I have a little bit of um, large board storage over to the side there that's kind of tucked next to the toolbox, and then that wall goes over towards the rest of the garage where all the cars are parked and stuff. Um, and then the next main station of the garage, if we move... If we move like this, you can see this is kind of a central island of power, shall we call it. Um, it looks like a hot mess, but it works pretty well because I really only have two circuits in my garage. I have the main circuit that powers the, the couple of outlets that are out here, the garage doors, the lights, all that stuff. And then I have one other circuit that comes in for the heater, actually. And I've pulled a drop cord off of that circuit, and it's that yellow line coming down right there. And as long as as long as I don't have the heater running, I can run any one of my major power tools and I won't flip a breaker. Um, and then I have to run my dust collector, which is that guy right there. And I have a video on him if you've not seen it and you're interested, go check that out. But I can run the, the dust collector on the main circuit and then I can run one major power tool on the same circuit as the heater. And then I can basically, that's as good as I can do for power. Um, and then the dust collector is just a one hose that I have to move to whatever tool I'm using at the moment. Um, so the main tools here are obviously I have a big band, well big, I have a, a jet band saw that's a good size. Um, and then I have on the cart here, the rigid oscillating spindle sander, uh, spindle belt combination sander. Uh, those are really nice. If you're ever looking for kind of a nice combination of spindle belt sander, um, I really like that one. I'm I'm very pleased with it. I'm not, I have a lot of rigid tools. I don't really, it just has kind of worked out that way. I don't, I don't really have any major preference for them. It's just their, their price point and quality seems to be about where I am and it works out. Underneath I have the, a rigid um, planer that works pretty well and that's on a flip cart. You know, you loosen up the sides and the flips over and I can get to the planer, the sander. I don't ever need both of them at the same time. Usually if I'm going to use the planer, I actually back it out in the garage and use it in the driveway because uh, it gets really loud in the shop. Um, and my wife works from home and I have to sometimes be careful about how loud I am. So uh, if I can, I take the planer outside if it's not super cold and I'll, I'll do any big planing out in the driveway. Um, and then I wheel it back in because the cart is all on wheels there. Uh, and then the dust collector is also on casters, so it's easy to move. And my table saw is actually on the other end of that. So we're gonna move the camera here and see if we can get a little view of that. All right, so here's my table saw. It is just a, an old Craftsman uh, 113. That's a, it was a hand-me-down. It, it was, my dad had it sitting in a, in, a, in a shed and the top had gotten all rusty. It was one that somebody had given him that somebody had given them, and it you know, has just been passed along from person to person. Uh, I've made a few upgrades. I made the table a little bigger. I built a fence for it. Um, this fence is actually based on the, uh, I think John Hines, his uh, ibuildit.ca. Um, that's based on his fence. Um, 
it, it's a pretty good fence. It, it definitely is an upgrade from the fence that came with it. And the fence that was on this saw, I didn't have all the parts for, so I couldn't get it to go all the way across. And the cost of the parts was kind of prohibitive if you were to buy them on eBay or something like that. Um, and so this fence is a decent solution and it's way cheaper than buying like a, I don't know, one of the Delta fences or one of the aftermarket ones that you can get your hands on. They're better fences than this probably, but this is good enough. It works for me. And uh, there's my... Um, Crosscut sled, and I actually recently acquired, that's a miter saw, uh, a hand miter saw, miter box, whatever you want to call it, um, that doesn't normally live there. It just doesn't have a better home yet. Um, so I'll find a spot for him to sit after I clean him up and restore him a bit. The table saw, I also put a new switch on. It's got a paddle safety switch, and I had to rebuild the cranks and things like that, but it works. It's a table saw. And then off to the side there is a whole bunch of garbage storage, things like that. Um, my mower sits over there and all that, and that really doesn't have much to do with my shop. It's just that it kind of encroaches on my space. Mentioning the power coming to this island, you can see my heater over there. I've got a drop cord coming off of that, that that powers the main tools. And then the other circuit of the garage, this comes off of the same thing that powers my garage door opener. And so I can power the dust collector off of that. And if I ever need a drop cord out in the driveway or garage, I can pull that guy out and it works out pretty well. So this high boy dresser here is actually a dresser. It came out of a bedroom at one point. It was in a set that we had used for a while and then upgraded and it, you know, it was very cheap. And so I threw casters on the bottom and the storage is kind of nice. It's just got tools and stuff. And then I mounted rulers and whatever on the side. And it's, I don't know, it's a nice little tool storage situation. So anyway, that's my shop. Thanks for watching. You know, it could be cleaner. Things could be, um, you know, maybe organized a little better, but for the most part, I think I've utilized the space pretty well. I've had a lot of different arrangements in here. I have moved things around many times, and this is kind of what I've settled on. It's been set up this way for probably about three years um, without any real major changes, and I'm pretty happy with it. For the most part, what I do fits in here um, without having to do too much moving around. And I don't know, hopefully you found it interesting to see what I, what I work in. I do also work out, out the back door of the shop, there's there's a service door there that I can go out, and there's just an area there that I don't have a couple stumps and some wood stored up outside, just stuff that I have cut and um, split, like big ash logs and things like that, uh, that are drying and sitting out there. So that's a little bit of my overflow, but for the most part, everything's in the shop. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.